Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. A while ago, I did a Q&A video, and in it, I talked about some of my favorite or noteworthy memories in the game. There's been some requests for more stuff like that, so I thought it'd be fun to have a whole video about it. Reminisce about the old days, talk about my footprint in gaming in general, and have some fun. Maybe even a series, if you guys would enjoy that. So, a lot of these are from Vanilla. I think with the game being new, in general, that's where most of us have a lot of memorable moments. World of Warcraft wasn't my first MMO though. The first one I got into actually was called the Star Wars Galaxies. I want to say that I started this one in 2003, not quite at release, but pretty close. It was actually a really amazing game. It was more of a sandbox sort of style where you don't pick a class upon character creation or there's a linear progression in zones or even levels. You were just sort of thrown into this world and out of 32 professions, you could build your character in any way that you wanted. I actually had a lot of fun with this and it was my first taste of online gaming, period. At this point, I was all single player games like Zelda and Final Fantasy, so Going into this giant world and playing with people from all across the world was a big thing and Galaxies was a really unique and memorable game for me. I played it for quite a while, up until early 2005, and the reason why I quit basically was because all of my friends quit playing, so I just ran out of stuff to do and eventually just got bored with it. They all switched to this new hit MMO called The World of Warcraft. Apparently, it was way better than the Star Wars Galaxies, and everyone was playing it, and it was the game to play. I resisted for quite a while, kind of making my last stand in Star Wars, but eventually, in March of 2005, I made the switch. So, a few months after the official release was when I got started. I installed the game, watched the intro cutscene, and was pretty blown away. I thought that there's no way that the whole game looked like that, and I was right. My first impression of the graphics was pretty poor actually. You gotta keep in mind that I was coming from a futuristic sci-fi Star Wars universe game which didn't have groundbreaking graphics, but with the right settings it looked quite nice at the time. So going from that, I immediately noticed the sort of cartoon style graphics that the World of Warcraft had, and I was like, ah man, I just wasted 50 bucks for a Disney game, didn't I? As much as an Alliance fan as you guys know I am, my first character was actually an undead, the mage class to be specific. Another thing to keep in mind was that I was terrible when I first started. Even though I technically had experience MMO-wise, I was absolutely terrible at the game even when I eventually hit 60. In Star Wars, the action bar was at the top of the screen and I didn't look at the bottom and I had no idea that I had any spells that I could use which is pretty important as a mage obviously, so my first hour I'd say of leveling was just me walking around and whacking everything with my staff. I used to spam click enemies because I thought that it made my character hit more, and I used to click on the head to try to get headshots. I died constantly, even in the beginning area because I never casted a single spell. Like I said, I was awful. So, about ready to give up, I saw another player walk by with an imp pet, which was just the coolest thing ever, I thought. In Star Wars, you could tame creatures in the wild and have them fight for you, so maybe that would be easier, I thought. I somehow managed to figure out how to talk and chat, and I asked how to get the pet, and a helpful player responded saying that only the warlock class could get one. So, I logged out and made an undead warlock, and again wandered around, whacking everything with my staff. Zero progress. Back then, 
the warlock only got the imp pet after a level 6 quest I believe and there was no way I was making it that far. So at this point I was about ready to quit and I stopped playing for the day. But the next day my buddy who got me into the game told me to keep at it and he said to roll alliance on the Cadgar server since that's where he was. My third character this time just happened to be a dwarf paladin. I thought that maybe it was the race that was slowing me down since the undead are so scrawny and weak. Of course they don't hit for that much. Look at this guy, he's all muscle. I bet he's way better. And because paladins can actually deal damage in melee, I found way more success of course. Eventually I looked down to my action bar and saw that I actually had skills down there and from there I started getting the hang of things and went on a whole series of adventures and had a lot of memorable moments. One of the first ones that comes to mind was seeing the first capital city which was Ironforge for me. Remember at this point when I started playing it was about four months after the release so there was no shortage of level 60s running about. I remember being just blown away at seeing people with high level gear and even mounts. Once I saw a high level paladin, I knew that I had to play as much as possible to get to that guy's level and I think it was this moment really was when the game had me hooked. Again, it was just the concept of being in such a massive world with so many people that seemed so cool to me. So I went around the city and started looking at all of the characters and the coolest ones I wrote down in a notepad since I wanted to make that class someday. In particular, I liked the rogue in that whole ninja style look. Everyone had these special glowy weapons, which turned out to be just weapon enchants, but I asked in chat how to get the fire and ice swords, someone answered something about enchanters, which completely flew over my head. Everything was a mystery, and I couldn't wait to level up and figure out the ins and outs of the game. So, my first city. A very memorable moment. Eventually, I reached level 10, which was big because you got to pick your specialization. At this point, I was just playing the game and I didn't really research anything, and being a paladin, I had the holy, protection, and retribution specs. Another thing that I should note at this point was I also had no concept of the different roles in the game, that is, tanking, damage, or healing. In Star Wars Galaxies, Every character could pretty much do everything if you wanted to, so having someone dedicated to just taking damage or just healing was a foreign concept for me. In Star Wars, if you wanted to be more tanky, you just threw on an armor set. And if you wanted to heal, you just picked up a couple of boxes and the medic profession which was also very easy, so this role system was something I didn't really consider. I looked through the choices of each tree and in the holy tree I saw an ability called holy shock. It was at the bottom of the tree but it said it did like 300 damage which was insane at my level. I was hitting things for like 10 damage at this point so I want this ability I thought to myself. But what didn't occur to me was that by the time I could actually get it I would be like level 40 and at that point 300 damage wasn't really impressive. So yes, I actually leveled to the mid 40s I'd say as a holy paladin but with a mindset of a damage roll. Even worse was I used a one hander and a shield. If you watched my other videos you all know how slow and painful vanilla leveling was. Well I found a way to make it even slower. Needless to say it took me many months to eventually reach the max. It did get me into dungeon groups a lot though. I was more in a damage mindset and people would ask me what spec I was. I'd say holy and they'd assume that I was a healer. They'd ask if I could heal and I said yeah technically I have some healing spells and I'm capable of healing. Again it just didn't click that it was preferred that some people had certain roles. So little did they know I had no idea what I was doing and I'd be up there with the tank whacking everything with my sword. Only occasionally throwing out some heals as I saw fit. Yeah, there were a lot of wipes if I was the only healer. On that note though, maybe it wasn't as bad as I'm thinking. 
hybrid builds did actually exist back then, and Paladins had some good options in that regard. Maybe that's why I like the Holy Paladin in Legion so much. You get to be in the thick of it, and the spec rewards that, and maybe that's an echo of the old days that I was fond of. So, eventually, I joined my friend's guild and made a bunch of new friends. Some that I still talk to, to this day actually. I had a druid buddy named Maver, his real life friend named Zarg, and another paladin named Liquid Vision. Those were my closest friends back then, and to this day, and we'd run dungeons together all the time. It was my preferred way of leveling, as opposed to the conventional questing. And it was handy too since quests were actually quite sparse back then, and often you'd run out of them and have to grind mobs. At least for the common player with limited knowledge of the game. Some of these dungeons, of course, required you to travel between continents, and that was another memorable moment for me, although pretty embarrassing. The first time that I tried to go to the other continent, which was Kalimdor for me since I was a dwarf, my buddy told me to go to the Menethil Harbor and go on the boat there on the right-hand side. That was all he said. So, I said okay. I found the boat and waited, and waited, and waited for about an hour it seemed. I waited so long that I thought I was bugged. I tried relogging, asking in chat, but the boat wouldn't budge. The problem was that in Menethil Harbor at the time, one of the boats was just scenery and it didn't actually move, and that was the one that I was on. So I was just waiting on this boat for like an hour saying, damn, they're really being realistic with this travel time. They must leave the docks only like a few times a day. But, in my defense on this one, again comparing it to Star Wars, to travel between planets, you had to go to a starport and wait for a transport. And initially I want to say that these transports only came out like once every 30 minutes or so, or maybe even an hour. So, the concept of having slow travel was something that I accepted, and as a result, I just waited on this stationary boat for like an hour before I gave up. Of course, I did eventually figure it out, and I felt pretty silly about it afterwards. So, stationary boats and holy DPS, my worst enemies in vanilla. But I think that's good enough to kick off the first episode here. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this. This will be the initial first step episode, and in future ones, I can talk more about moments from leveling, my first time raiding, and so on. I got a lot of stories, so if you guys want more, I'll be glad to share them. Heck, I might do it anyways since this was pretty fun to talk about. The good old days. That's about it though. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.